I want to share a love story with you today, a love letter. This is a love letter not to an individual, but to a group of people, a, a large group of people who make innovative and life-changing contributions to our community every day. I want to share with you my love letter to the Richmond City Public Schools. Now, I'm Secretary of Education for all of Virginia. That's 100 plus local school divisions, 23 community colleges, 16 public universities, various and sundry museums and other institutions. So it's a little risky to favor one of my responsibilities over another. But I, I think we're all allowed a first love and, and I hope you'll forgive a little partiality for me on that, on that account. My love affair with Richmond Public Schools began when I was a 12 year old. My dad, Linwood Holton, was elected governor of Virginia in 1970. And in his inaugural address, he called for an end to racial segregation in Virginia. Now that was not an entirely popular position at the time for a Southern governor to be taking. It was only seven years prior that Governor George Wallace had issued his infamous call from the steps of the University of Alabama. And yet my dad had the opportunity early in his term to put his words into action when the courts ordered crosstown busing to integrate our Richmond City Schools. Th this was our opportunity time, as my dad is fond of saying. So one morning that fall, my dad led my sister off to the high school with the local, national, international press in tow, following their every steps. Meanwhile, my mother took my brother Woody and me to Mosby Middle School. I'm the one in the goofy outfit behind the handshake. <laughs> Mosby Middle School, now Martin Luther King Middle School, formerly all African American school. I got a great education from dedicated teachers at Mosby and later at Open High School, where I, the experimental high school in the city where I went after that. And I also learned a lot from my classmates as we created our new community together. You know, we did all the normal things that teenagers do. We studied. We cheered teams, we, we had drama on stage and off, uh, but, but we did it all with a little extra sense of purpose in our circumstances. It, it was the first time I've had a chance to be part of something bigger than myself, and it, and it made its mark on me. Ever since, I've been a passionate advocate of public education and of the Richmond Public Schools in particular. My own children, all three of my own children graduated from the Richmond City Schools. The uh, oldest, uh, you, you'll forgive a little bit of a mother's, uh, mother's pride in bragging, the oldest is an officer in the Marine Corps. The younger two are passionate artists, nurturing dreams absolutely born and bred here in the Richmond City Schools phenomenal music and arts programs. Now I have the opportunity often as the Secretary of Education to visit our schools really all across the Commonwealth. I uh, uh, snuck recently, just last week, I snuck into a classroom quietly in the back. Sometimes I go with a, a noisy entourage, but this time quietly snuck into the back of a classroom of Thomas Jefferson High School right here in the city of Richmond. This is who I was visiting. I hope you can see them. Over here on your left, Mr. Stevens. He's the master teacher, the math teacher, an experienced guy, the head of the robotics team at TJ. The bearded guy on the other side, Mr. Fox, He's the math teacher in training. The young man in the middle is uh, Reuben, a senior, a high school senior, a member of the robotics team, and the robot is Fluffy. <laughs> they told me that the girls on the robotics team named the robot. I was pleased to know there are enough girls to get naming rights. <laughs> I, I spoke with one of those girls shortly after this picture was taken. She, uh, she, she's a first generation, she'll be the first generation in her family to go to college next year when she'll enter one of our great engineering programs at one of our public universities here in Virginia. She tried to explain to me the project she was working on for her international baccalaureate program there at TJ. It involved geometry and analyzing beauty and a very fancy program. She, she showed me pictures of her classmates with geometric figures overlaying their faces. I didn't get any of it. Uh, <laughs> But I wasn't, I wasn't at TJ to visit the International Baccalaureate students or the robotics team. I, I, I was there to watch Mr. Fox and to learn more about the program that brought him there, the Richmond Teacher Residency Program. Now this is a VCU program. It works to recruit top college graduates from all across America to 
immerse them in an urban education environment, to have them work with master teachers for a year-long residency. At the end of that year, they get their master's in education, and then they enter upon teaching right here in Richmond for at least three years and hopefully a lifetime. Now, this is an innovative program based on a national model, and the research shows that it increases the retention rates of both the veteran teacher and the novice. Now, that day, I had an opportunity to watch Mr. Fox teaching his uh, not, not the International Baccalaureate students, but the standard Algebra II class at TJ. He, uh, he was ready for these kids when they came in the door. He had a fast-paced series of activities that kept them going for a solid hour, working on various math problems, various algebra problems. He, he had those kids energized. He had them, uh, 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 well, the class was noisy with activity, but focused. I was impressed. These were 16 and 17-year-old city kids. This was the last class of the day, and it was math. But they were matching his enthusiasm. Now, now that's, that's uncommon. After the class, I had an opportunity to watch Mr. Stevens and Mr. Fox do their daily debrief, which they do as part of the program every day. Mr. Stevens had kept track of which students had spoken out, who had raised their hands and who had not, who was checking their cell phone, and what Mr. Fox was doing about all of that, how he was reacting to them. They backed and forth about that. One student had slept through most of the class, and they talked about the sleeper, how Mr. Fox had been working with his dad to address some issues, and maybe it was time to call dad back again later this week. They talked about Mr. Fox's coursework and how it related to what was going on in the classroom and how Mr. Fox could improve. And then they were kind enough to answer my questions for a few minutes. Most importantly, I said, you guys are math whizzes. You realize you could double your salaries and cut your stress in half in the private sector. Why are you here? Well, Mr. Stevens jumped in first. He said, some of us are foolish. <laughs> but then he confessed he really loves teaching. He loves motivating his students and working with those who are motivated to help them go to new heights. He also said, I live in this city. I'm, I'm invested in these kids. They're going to be part of my lives, part of my community either way, and I have a personal stake in their success. Mr. Fox, Mr. Fox was on his way to corporate America with an applied math degree a couple of years ago when his mother passed away. Now, she had been a student in the Richmond Public Schools some years ago, and, and she had struggled. He felt a calling, and now he's a math teacher in training. Now, these teachers don't have an easy job. I, I, I could tell just in my hour of observation that those, those algebra students, even though energized, some of them were really struggling with the material. Almost all of the students we saw come from families of poverty many of them from the kinds of entrenched intergenerational poverty that is one of the biggest obstacles to academic success. 74% of the kids in our Richmond City Schools are eligible for free or reduced lunch, almost twice the statewide average. The buildings in our urban schools aren't always glamorous. None of our teachers are paid anywhere near their worth, what they're worth. All of them have to put up with Excessive testing pressures. Do I have any teachers in the room? The, uh, it, it, there are challenges abound, and yet they're there. Why are they there? They're there because these students need them. These are the students they've come to know and love. These are the students for whom education is the ticket out of poverty, the ticket to successful adult lives. These two teachers know, as I do from the research, what we all know instinctively, that outside of home and family, the quality of the teacher is the number one factor in all students' success. And so that's why I'm all in for Mr. Stevens and Mr. Fox and their students and their colleagues across the city who are lighting the imagination, exciting young minds in kids every single day, and, in truth be told, their colleagues all across the Commonwealth and all across the nation who are doing the same work where needed with students all over. These, these teachers and their students and our public education system, going all the way back to Thomas Jefferson's day, 
These, our public education system deserves every bit of my love and support. Now, I haven't come far in life, really, since that picture taken of me at Mosby in 1970. In fact, I haven't gone more than two miles. <laughs> Literally, my first job out of law school was working for the judge who issued that busing order back in 1970. And his courthouse was just a few minutes away from Mosby. My law practice, my courthouse, where I was a juvenile court judge in the city and worked with some of these same families. The executive mansion, where I returned as first lady when my husband was governor of Virginia, and now my office in Governor McAuliffe's cabinet, all a stone's throw from Mosby Middle School. I'm honored that my life journey, my uncommon life journey, has rooted me deeply in this community. Now, I started off by saying this was a love letter, and, and I'm a protective lover, but I'm not a jealous lover. And so I want to invite you to love our educators, to love our schools, too. Love them and show it. Show your love by getting involved. Get informed. Vote. Pay attention to what's going on in your schools. Volunteer. Maybe run for school board someday. Now that's a thankless job, but one of the most important. <laughs> one of the most important. One of the most important. Teach. Career switchers welcome, especially people with technical skills. We got a few of you in the audience. A and maybe, just maybe, think about sending your kids, the kids of this creative, committed TED crowd, think about sending your kids to our city schools someday. If my experience and that of my children's experience is telling, they'll be the better for it. Thank you.